Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? It's hard to tell, though, because I'm looking at an empty chair. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to adjust my movement, too. <laughs> well, that's what I was saying. It's weird sitting this way. Like, you're all making fun of me for sitting in a different spot, but it feels weird, man. I wasn't making fun. I suggested you sit in a different spot. What I was making fun of you for was sliding over bit by bit throughout the podcast <laughs> as the sun moves. Yeah. I was I said, maybe literally you just start over there. You know, running from the sun the entire <laughs> podcast. <laughs> If you had a sunshade in that window, it wouldn't be so bad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's an odd size. Uh, I can see that. Although I you, had to... Get you a shower curtain and put it across <laughs> there. That would be fine. Go grab one of the airline blankets, maybe, or something. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I like having that window. Besides, that's that's the cat's window. That's like TV for cats. No, I get it. Yeah. Although they don't climb the new tower <laughs> for yeah. some reason. So I guess they don't watch as much TV as they used to. <laughs> Yeah, they still the sit habit. in the cell, actually. Yeah. Um, and like chirp at squirrels and whatever. Yeah. Turtles or whatever passes by. I don't really see the turtles. I don't think they care about the turtles. They're not, we're, you're, they're not as interested in the turtles as we are. <laughs> right. Yeah, we're definitely more interested in the turtles. They're more yeah. interested in the squirrels. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> so they The squirrels move faster. It like, yeah. um, they would triggers en- that, they that would predator enjoy instinct. They would chasing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I kind of wish that I could let them out and let them do that because I don't. I'm not a big fan of squirrels anymore. Uh, the, I was when I was a kid. The but squirrel population's gotten pretty crazy. Yeah. In around here, um, last few years. I sometimes wonder if I could get away with firing a 22 pistol <laughs> in my backyard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I think I'm in the part of town that I'm not. Yeah, of. you definitely get in trouble for that. Now, whether or not you get away with it is another question. <laughs> I mean, it just goes. T- I mean, they're not loud. Yeah, but you, your neighbors. Are I mean, loud. like a a nail gun is as loud as a twenty two pistol. Yeah, no, I agree. I'm, all I'm saying is your neighbors are close. <laughs> yeah, but I'd be shooting down. I wouldn't be shooting at squirrels I'm not worried, in the trees. I'm not I'd be shooting about you down hitting. at squirrels on the no. ground. I, I trust you as far as gun safety. Everything will be fine. <laughs> I, what I don't trust is your neighbors not calling the police on you. <laughs> yeah. Only if they that's, saw me. That's that would be my concern. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't think I know my neighbors well enough for them to be like, "Oh, that's just old Michael." <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> um, Sign of the times, right there. Uh, yeah, I suppose. So, um, <laughs> I'm actually. This is weird. I'm going to start by talking about a couple of movies. Okay. Uh, that I watched recently. Um, I got a little sick this weekend, and so I spent a lot of time on the couch and in the bed. Yeah. And watched a few movies. Uh, one of them that I watched was Godzilla minus one. Uh, a Japanese film came out last year. Yeah. I think it was last year. Um, it was really good. Oh, really? Yeah. I recommend it. Uh, I mean, it was Godzilla film and it was kind of low budget. And so Godzilla doesn't always look that great. Um, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) he's not very intimidating. I mean, he's. Fairly intimidating, but it's some it, sometimes it just doesn't look very <laughs> real. <laughs> yeah. That said, um, it was really a good story. Oh, it was really? like a, it was like a good human story. Yeah. Um, about uh, sacrifice and redemption and duty and family, and it was just it was just well well constructed, and I got invested in the characters very early, and I just I thought it was a really good it's a really good film. Interesting. Um, another one that I watched is a movie called Mud. Okay. Uh, something Nickel, um, or Nichols is the director, writer, director. Yeah. And this is what struck me about that one. This is for people who live in the South. Yeah. Who, who actually live in the South. Yeah. Um, it was, it was a South that you would recognize. It was like the scenery and especially like the town stuff was like driving through Loxley. Oh yeah, yeah. Like just small town. Like, yeah, small yeah. town. Um, obviously impoverished, piggly wiggly, and everything. I mean, <laughs> yeah. uh, big. Um, you know, parking lots full of boats, and <laughs> yeah. like little, yeah. you know, like little bass boats and stuff. Uh, yeah. Just, I don't know. It it was like just felt really familiar. Yeah, it was like a real South. Yeah, and I, it's something that I don't feel like you see out of Hollywood 
very much. No, yeah. You get either antebellum South or you get like like a modernized South or a caricature of the South. But this was like this was like a you know an impoverished rural South that people who lived down here would recognize. It was just kind of yeah. neat to see. That's cool. And it was a good film. Was it? All yeah. Right. Uh, it stars Matthew McConaughey actually. Yeah. I think this was the second film by the director. Um, Cause then I went like looking for things after, after I watched it, I was like, Oh man, that was really good. And yeah. it turns out that he's had like five films and like four of them are set in the South. Oh wow. And he grew up in Arkansas, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so he, he knows a little he, bit. Yeah. About he's, it. Yeah. he's writing stuff that he knows and it's, um, I don't know. It was just, I enjoyed seeing that on film. Uh, yeah. Represented accurately. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Um, you know, people living in boats on the river and yeah. like, I, I was just very, yeah. I've driven up Mobile River and seen those scenes, you know? Yeah. 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 Uh, anyway. So that one, I, that one I like really recommend if you're from the South and you kind of want to see a depiction of the South that you don't generally see on film. Yeah. And, uh, I think Godzilla minus one is just kind of for everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a popcorn film. It's a creature feature thing, you know, action yeah. film. Um, but they made it on like $35 million, which is a minuscule amount of money Small for that kind of now. film. Yeah. Yeah. For something that's going to take that much special effects. Mm -hmm. And, uh, considering that cost, it actually looks pretty good. Yeah. That's cool. And it was a good story. Yeah. So, Having gotten rid of all of the completely unrelated <laughs> stuff. Get into some some um, politics. So Assange is back in Australia, free man. Yeah. Yeah. That's you know, I uh all right, so I have some questions about this, but let's just start with the basics. Right. Um he was freed in exchange for a plea deal. So he pleaded guilty to a felony uh, for possession of classified materials, essentially. Yeah. Um, and uh, they said that they were content with time served 62 months. Now, think about that for a moment, too. All right, this is a guy who has been imprisoned for more than five years and for nearly 10 years before that was essentially imprisoned, confined to the Ecuadorian embassy, to an embassy yeah. in London. Um, so he's really spent 15 years of his life <laughs> and trapped. Yeah. Yeah. Cannot leave a building, <laughs> um, for publishing leaked materials related to government cr criminal activity. Yeah. U S yeah. government. Yeah. Um, now I think that they mostly went after him so hard because of the vault seven materials. Yeah. Um, which was the the information that he released about the intelligence uh, agency's tools for um, hacking into personal devices, electronic devices, and uh, and beyond, and their ability to frame others, to leave <laughs> breadcrumbs leading elsewhere to yeah. you know to other foreign governments and things like that. Yeah, so. Obviously, they were upset about the uh, the war logs. Um, yeah, Chelsea Manning's war logs that showed uh, U.S. forces involved in war crimes and things like that. But um, that's I think the, the Vault Seven I, materials is what it was really, really about. Well, that's the one I hear brought the the deal with the war logs is the one that I hear brought up the most, and that mm -hmm. that people are who, that are like think that he should be jailed and should be prosecuted. Like that's the one they point to because they're like, Oh, well, you know, he endangered like, um, people on the ground and this sort of thing. Well, that was just which, a lie though, which, I, that, which is what I was going to say is that, but that's, that narrative has been pushed since this agreement. Um, like that's what the, the more I would call traditional Republicans mm -hmm. that, that have a problem with this have pushed. Yeah. Um, well, there has, Show me the evidence. Um, well, there has never been any evidence presented that he put any American troops into danger with the information that he no. released. And, and I may get some pushback on this, but even if he had, I do think that what he was, what he was publishing was important enough. 
Mm-hmm. That I mean, if once it became public, it was kind of the military's duty to to take care of these people that were that would have potentially at least been in jeopardy, and like something needed to happen. Like this is like we can't just go into countries and commit war crimes. Like, yeah, that's not okay. Uh, I mean, if there had been a video released of the um, melee massacre in Vietnam, yeah, would. Would people say that, well, that information shouldn't have been released because it could put American troops in danger? Or, I mean, actually, I know that there would be people that said that, but um, I would hope that the majority of Americans would say, no, 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 wait a minute. We needed to know that that kind of thing was going on. Yeah. Um, or actually, I think most people knew that it was going on anyway, but like we needed proof that this was going on. And the it's not the the release of the information that put the American soldiers in danger is the American soldiers that put the American soldiers in danger yeah, by and committing the, government the atrocities. That, yeah. By committing the atrocities and the government for putting them there in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I agree with that as well. Now there are drawbacks to this. Uh, first uh, you can't use a plea deal as a precedent really. Yeah. But, but there the, is now, but it's still the door's still open for this. If he had been prosecuted and then acquitted, uh, acquitted, then yeah. the door would kind of be closed on this sort of thing, where that precedent would be like, no, well, it turns out like a, a no, this, this is completely be. protected First Amendment speech, exactly, and, you know, so. and that's not what we got here. Yeah, with him pleading out, this the door's still kind of open to some of this. Yeah, um, as I understand it, the Pentagon demanded that um, in order to be freed, he would have to plead guilty to a felony charge. Yeah, yeah. Related to this. Yeah. Um, The New York Times uh, said that it does, it is the first time um, in U.S. history where, uh, where gathering and publishing government secrets that they don't want published... Mm-hmm. Um, was successfully <clears throat> uh, criminalized. Yeah. And that that's a problem, obviously. That that'll have a chilling effect on national security reporters and so forth. Oh, yeah. Um, because even if even though there hasn't been a precedent set, the government essentially can say, look how effectively we can ruin your life. Exactly. Because, <laughs> I mean, they've done that to Assange. Yeah. You know. So when I, I when I got the information and sent it to you, you replied back, um, "It's still a loss for Liberty, though." And yeah. I said, "Yeah, but it's it's a win for his." It, and it is. I wholeheartedly agree with that. And mm-hmm. I don't fault him for for taking the deal. Yeah. Like I mean, he absolutely is entitled to that and yeah. should and should do that. Um, it just it sucks for the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. Was kind of what I was getting at. No, and and I agree with you. And that was kind of the point that I wanted to make, though, too, is that I um, I in no way fault him for making this agreement oh, to yeah. go home. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you can't ask somebody to sacrifice any more than he already has. Yeah, um, he's already given up too much. Yeah, like he shouldn't have had to give up what he's given up mm-hmm. um, for what he did. Like it's just. So, yeah, uh, th- he's got he's still got small children that until a couple of days ago had never seen him in free. person. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, wow. Um, and so while ideally I would have liked to have somebody stick to their principles and say, yeah, I'm not going to agree to a felony here because I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, there's no way that I could hold him to that. Well, I don't no, know that I, I, and, I wouldn't probably do that at that no. point. Certainly. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, like I say, he's already given up more than he should have had to. Yeah. Um, and there's no guarantee that if he had held out that in that he, the stillmate would have just continued till he died in jail. Yeah. Well, that was kind of what they were hoping for, I think. Yeah. Uh, but it does, um, it does prompt another question which I think is actually a lot more interesting, is that why now? Oh, uh, I have some theories on that. Okay, um, let's hear them. I do too. <laughs> one was, one is, is that um, I think that Trump was getting ready to make an announcement. I mean, he's already said he was going to free Ross. Um, and he said on, um, is it Tim Pool's show, I think, 
that yeah he had that that they had because they asked him about Assange and he said that they had big news on that coming um, and I think that he was going to come out and 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 try to make this a political issue in this election mm-hmm. um, and I you know more power to him because that would be a winner like if he got out there and just started stumping on that. Like there's there's a lot of people that will get behind that, yeah. and there's a big case to be made there. And and as of now, this is more of a niche story. Like this isn't something that's that's broad. I mean, everybody kind of knows about it, but it's not like a not like it would be if Trump started talking about it. Well, maybe that's true because I, I was talking to um, somebody at work about it, and they're and. Because that was one of mine. And in fact, yeah. the most likely scenario I thought is that it's just a campaign issue. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll go into more detail about that in a few minutes. But they uh, they said to me, um, yeah, but this isn't an, this isn't really an issue to people. No. And so, but maybe it, you're right. Maybe, maybe Trump could make it an issue. He could make it an issue. He's, he's got the, he's got the big microphone mm-hmm. and, and like I say, I mean, there's a story to be told here. And depending on how Trump chose to tell that story, he could, he could make some hay with it, I think. Yeah. My, my response was, well, you obviously follow a different kind of media than me. <laughs> yeah. And I said, we you, probably mentioned the guy once a month on the podcast actually yeah. for years <laughs> exactly. for, for the entire as long Life as we've the done the podcast, yeah. yeah. So. Um, so, um, but okay. So I, I had somebody else tell me at work that there was a story that I couldn't verify this afternoon. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to throw this out there as somebody else's idea and I am dubious. All right. But uh, that there was a story that the Federal Reserve got hacked yeah. Like the day before they announced this deal with hmm. with Assange. Um and so the the theory that that they were proposing is that it was blackmail. Yeah. That um all this information from the Federal Reserve was trapped essentially behind a wall uh encrypted until they released Assange. Until they released Assange. Yeah. Uh, that that's one I haven't heard. So yeah, I I don't have any idea where that came. From. That could have come from knowing the person. Uh, it could have come from like 4chan or something. Who knows? Yeah, well, that's a new one on me. So I don't I don't put a lot of stock into that one. Uh, yeah. m- my ideas um, from least likely to most likely were uh, that it was still possible that he would win his final appeal in the UK. Oh yeah. Not likely, but yeah. it, it was possible it was that he could still, yeah. yeah, he could still win his appeal with the UK and they could deny extradition. Um, and then he would be freed and it would just kind of be an embarrassment would, to the U S would look bad. Yeah. For, yeah. um, our, for all intents and purposes, at least our closest ally UK, I think is essentially a lapdog of the U S but yeah. Uh, sorry to any British folk out there. Just <laughs> the heavy mis- it. <laughs> givings about that. But, uh, that our, um, our closest ally would free a very important prisoner to the U S government on the grounds that, um, that releasing him into the U S justice system was so dangerous to him. Yeah. So, uh, that there's such bad conditions. In well, the US I was going to say, uh, and the truth is, is that's a whole podcast right there is the conditions of our prison system. Well, they already denied extradition once because of over that. that yeah. yeah. So, uh, it would be, it would be an embarrassment for the U S if the UK let him go. Yeah. Um, for those reasons. But I don't think that was likely to happen. I, I think that he would have been extradited if they'd have followed through. Yeah. The other, the next thing is that um, it could just be a real embarrassment for the U.S. if he was extradited, if they held trial. Yeah, and could get a conviction. Well, there's that. Um, I mean, there's been a case made that Trump's uh, first term really weakened the case that the U.S. government had against Julian Assange. Of course. Yeah. Trump's 
um, administration was the first one to bring a case against <laughs> Julian Assange. So I'm not quite sure how that works, but I do understand what they're talking about. They're like, you know, information, if they couldn't suppress information about how uh, Pompeo was talking about assassinating him in the Ecuadorian embassy yeah. and things like that, that's, that looks bad. It makes sense. Um, yeah. Also, that it would just dredge up a lot of, I mean, it would get, maybe not the mainstream media, because they're pretty well under control by the U.S. government, it seems to me, but enough independent media would be talking about the information that Assange had put out there mm-hmm. over the years, and there's a lot there's of it, a and lot. a lot of it's <laughs> embarrassing to the U.S. government. A whole lot of it. <laughs> and also just that the... Um, the the general feeling by the citizenry of the United States towards their government is more negative than it was when all this started. Yeah. And so the, I think that there would just be more doubt in the minds of, or, or maybe just doubt in more of the minds of the U S citizens that yeah. this was, that there was something wrong with this prosecution than there would have been five years ago yeah. or certainly 15 years ago. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah, because 15 years ago, the Republicans were in lockstep against Assange, but mm. that ain't the case no more. No, <laughs> like the a lot of the like, there's only it's a small percentage of I think Republicans that are still of that mindset. I think that they could manipulate the public well enough through the mainstream media again to get back there. It's just nobody thinks yeah. about it anymore. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but there's there's certainly more um, skepticism about the U.S. government now than there was before. Yeah. And so it might just be that they just don't want everybody talking about Assange and what just he did deal. and yeah. so on. So yeah. now um, to the thing that I thought was the most likely is it's just a campaign game. Yeah. Uh, because pretty much everything, I, this sounds so cynical, but there's truth in it. It's that time. Uh, that yeah. We're in that part of the cycle here. Exactly. Where everything everything that, that they do is about the campaign. Yep, exactly. And so um, I thought the same thing that you were talking about is that, you know, Trump said it to the libertarians and it's been coming up every once in a while in some of his, his speeches and so forth. Yeah. Uh, that it, first off it, pulls some of the progressive left uh, back into um, Biden's fold because he's yeah. having trouble with the progressive left, certainly. Yeah, he, um, he needs a win with the progressive left that this is enough of an issue with the progressive left that it could get him some points. Yeah. Um, and that it, if nothing else, it takes it away as, a, as an issue for Donald Trump. Yeah. So I agree. I think that that's the most likely Uh, situation is that it's just a campaign play to either take the issue away from Donald Trump and also potentially to gain him some points with the progressive left that he needs their support to get reelected. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Some would say that that's ridiculous. The election's already decided. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Then we might as well just pack it in. Then is all I can say to those folks. Yeah. Uh, Well, (laughs) Yeah. What I keep saying to those folks, but they just won't listen, is that if you think this country's going the wrong way and you think that you need to change, then you need to stop voting for Republicans or Democrats. Yeah. Find somebody else. Right. I don't even care who. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. somebody else. Yep. Um, all right. So you have anything more you want to say about Assange? No, I think that pretty well covers it. It's, yeah. it's a, I'm glad he's out. Like, Me too. That's, it's, it's, it's a win. It is, it's a loss in liberty in some ways, but it's a win at least for one man's liberty. And, I mean, at this stage of the game, I'll take that. <laughs> it got people talking about it again. It did. Yeah. Um, I, there's so much doubt in mainstream media at this point, I, yeah, yeah, I don't know what it means really for mainstream media. I, I think what it, they've shown is that um, the government doesn't care as long as you only leak the stuff that they want you to leak. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because that's something <laughs> else to keep in mind here is though he exposed just all kinds of stuff in in our government, nobody ever paid any price for that. Like mm-hmm. the stuff with the war logs, it's not like anybody went to jail over that. Um, 
Oh, Let's yeah, see. you mean, and I was about to say uh, Chelsea Manning did. Well, yeah, <laughs> nobody, that, okay, my bad. <laughs> yeah. And then nobody that deserved to go to jail yeah. went to jail over that. Um, True. No, you're right. <laughs> the people did go to jail, it's just the wrong ones. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, it's, it's. Well, what he was doing, and what they finally got him to plead guilty f- to a felony charge for are things that investigative journalists do. Yeah. Um, it was for helping Manning avoid detection while yeah. he stole information yeah, and asking for more information than Manning originally gave. Yeah. But that's, that's what you, first off, as a journalist, asking for, that's the job. Yeah. As asking for more information than you originally got from a source, yeah. that's journalism. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, and as for helping Manning avoid detection, uh, while, taking that information. Um, it is, uh, it is an ethical duty of journalists to help protect their source. And that's just, that's what he was doing. That's what he was doing. Yeah. So, um, okay. So there were a couple of, uh, Supreme court cases that were that, I mean, next week is probably going to be nothing but Supreme Court. I was going to say, the Supreme Court's been busy the past week, so there's there's definitely some stuff, I think, that we haven't dug into that we're going to want to dig into for the next podcast. Yeah. So people listening to think that we're forgetting about this stuff. We're not. Yeah, we just, just haven't wanna, had time to We just want to dig into, into it this. good before we talk about it. Yeah. But uh, there is a couple we wanted to talk about tonight. I just wanted to talk about the firearms things. Firearms stuff. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so there was the, the bump stock. They overruled the bump stock ban. Trump's Trump's bump stock, stock ban. <laughs> so we'll make sure everybody remembers where that came from. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. which I, I think was the right decision. And, um, it's, yeah. and it may play into, uh, the decision about, uh, the Chevron deference decision, because okay. this is one of those situations where a, um, an executive agency decided to reinterpret the rules to turn a whole bunch of normal Americans into criminals overnight by redefining what uh, constituted an automatic weapon. Yeah. I haven't done a lot of looking into the Chevron deference thing yet, Mm -hmm. and I do want to kind of do a deep dive into that. Yeah. But just so people kind of have at least an idea, because I bet a lot of our listeners don't know what that is. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, and you may know more than me because, like I said, I haven't d- dove deep in it, but basically it's the idea that these agencies can just make these rules and everybody's got to follow them. Well, it's what it really says, not that they can make the rules, but that they can interpret the rules as they see as fit. As they see fit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's fair. And and we'll just well, leave it at fair. that. Well, it's not fair. But we'll just, we'll just leave it at that for now. There's a lot of... There's a lot of nuance to that one. That yeah. that one's that's some weird stuff because the way they intended it when they made that ruling it has been flipped. Yeah. So it was originally about uh executive agencies not enforcing some things that that some thought should be enforced because they interpreted the rules yeah. very sp- specifically or strictly. Yeah. Um And what has happened, though, is that now all these agencies are interpreting the um, guidelines given to them by Congress very loosely. Yeah. And to the point that they basically can do do whatever whatever they they want. want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So. And that's coming before the Supreme Court at some point. um, And that's certainly what happened here with the bump stocks is that they decided to reinterpret uh, what or redefine what it constituted an automatic weapon to include this yeah which was stupid yeah um now here's another thing to think about with the bump stock so now the bump stock ban has been overturned they are legal yeah get them while you can who is responsible for paying back all of the americans who got rid of theirs yeah, yeah, yeah. If because you gave they were one suddenly up, criminals. Yeah, if you gave one up, can you go now, go reclaim that one you gave up? Yeah. Or get reimbursed by the U.S. government for your loss of property? Yeah, which, by the way, I looked into those things. I'm not really a big fan of them, um, but they're not cheap. Like, they're, they're, it's a very expensive, or fairly expensive add-on to a gun. 
It depends on what you're... It seems expensive to me. I don't know. <laughs> it depends on your definition of that, I guess. Seems like you could tape a couple of bouncy balls to the back of your stock. And <laughs> right. Get the same. Talking about rigging something up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I understand the concept of it, so it doesn't yeah. seem like it would be that hard to reproduce something on the cheap that would do that. That would do that, yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I just found that interesting. Like, now that the... They made a rule. They used law enforcement to enforce the rule. Yeah. And now finally it got to the courts and the courts said, yeah, you, you could, you that. had no right <laughs> to make that rule. So who is responsible for making whole all the people that followed the rule Yeah, that was actually outside of the, the purview of the agency that made it? Yeah. Which that that fixing that little problem would go a long way to having this problem in the first place. I don't think that it would actually, because the U.S. So? government can just print money. Well, that's so true. So th- it's not really a loss to them. Yeah. I mean, if if everybody in the country actually understood that if they just print money, that everything becomes more expensive, then maybe it would, because there would be <laughs> a lot of pressure from the citizenry to not do to the that. government to not just print money. Yeah. But since people don't understand where inflation comes from, I don't think that making them liable for losses no. actually makes any difference. Mm, government do doesn't care about profit and loss. That's exactly the problem with government. Yeah. Well, is that profit true. and loss is irrelevant to government because uh, they can th- everything that they have they took from somebody to begin with. Yeah, exactly. Even what they print. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so like do you really think that uh, bills are a problem for a mugger? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's not really paying for it anyway. Yeah. What does he care? Yeah. Raises rent. All right. Well, I'll just go mug more people. <laughs> right. <laughs> I guess that is work. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's more work. <laughs> yeah. It's not quite like just printing money, but yeah. still. Yeah. I think the point remains. I I think yeah, you make a good point. <laughs> I, I I agree. Um So, I guess that went quicker than I thought it would. That yeah. particular issue. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then the other one was that the they made a um, they had a decision that determined that it is okay to confiscate firearms from somebody who has a restraining order placed against them. See that you were tell so I had not heard anything about this one. That just seems wild to me. Yeah, like, I'm how not, did they come down on that side of that? I. I think that the argument is essentially that due process of law has been followed. There's a danger to somebody, and so yeah. therefore. But you need nothing to get a restraining well, th- order. But that's that's my point, is that getting a restraining order is not like an act of Congress. Mm-hmm. Like It's not like there's a bunch of steps, and by the time you've gotten the restraining order, like we know for sure this person's a threat and mm-hmm. all of that kind of thing. Like That's not how it works. Yeah, you just go file. You just go file it. So now mm-hmm. you're talking about a system where you can just, you don't like somebody, go file a restraining order against them and they'll go take their guns. Yeah. That seems wild to me. Yeah, I agree. Um, so all the people out there that are complaining about this right wing uh, Supreme Court that. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, <laughs> uh, this is an example of that not really working out because there is yeah. nothing, nothing at all in the, in the Constitution, the Second Amendment. Yeah. Um, that gives you any reason to take anybody's guns away. No. Actually, like none whatsoever. No, yeah, nothing. It ain't in if there, you're a yeah. criminal, yeah. the federal government can't make a law. It says, shall not be infringed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Period. <laughs> yeah. So just because you're a criminal doesn't mean that the federal government has any right to take your guns away. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that there's no reason to take people's guns away. <laughs> let, yeah. let me just be yeah. clear about that. I'm not... Yeah. I think that there are valid reasons for taking somebody's guns away. Like take the guns first and due process later? No, but that's, that's kind of what this is. That's another Trump thing, by the way. Oh, I know. <laughs> just for you right-wingers out there. I'm just yeah. going to poke you when I can with that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, to me, this is a lot like red flag laws. Yeah. this is, To me, that's what this, that's what this sounds like. Mm-hmm. Um, same type style thing. Um, and so I think it's a huge mistake by the Supreme Court. Now, this this is going to relate to um, another... Actually, let's use it to transition. All right. Okay. 
So I believe, and I think that there's good legal reason to believe it, that the, um, the U.S. Constitution restrains the federal government, not state governments. I mean, that was the original intent. Right. At least. Yeah. So all these things that, you know, Congress shall make no law, et cetera, you know, all of these things um, are restraining the federal government, not state governments. The state yeah. governments want to take people's guns away. I think that they have the legal right to do so. Yeah. Um, if state governments want to restrict free, free speech, I think they have <laughs> the legal right to do so. Now, the good news is that almost every constitution, state constitution in the United States also includes these clauses. Yeah. yeah. So if it's against their own state constitution, then they can't do it. It's still a legal framework there. Yeah. But I don't think that the federal constitution, the U.S. constitution, restrains straight states from making laws against these things. Yeah. I think and that's in fact, fair. there's a long history in the United States of various localities restricting guns um, within those localities. Oh yeah, I mean, you go back to the old West. Like mm. that's I, I know just watching westerns with my papa. Like that's something that they did. Yeah. <laughs> like, you come in in the town, you leave your guns at the border or whatever. Um, so you know the same is true of the Second Amendment. Same is true of the First Amendment. Yeah. The First Amendment's um, uh, establishment clause uh, says that Congress shall make no law um, establishing uh, a state. Uh, religion. I, I'm yeah. not quoting that exactly right, but yeah. anyway. That's the gist. Um, respecting the establishment of a religion. Is that how it's said? I think so. Anyway, uh, that does not restrict states from creating their own state religions. Um, yeah. And in fact, in in the history of the United States, uh, I think the original 13 colonies, maybe all of them had state religions. Really? Um, you know, state-established religions. Yeah. I don't think that they ever had them um, state established religions that restricted people from practicing other religions. Though. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I was going to say. It was more of just like this. Re this is how the state feels, but mm -hmm. you do as you please. Yeah, that style thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, now that said, Louisiana has just uh, signed into law that the Ten Commandments from the Christian Bible. I guess the Jewish Bible too, because um, it's it's in the old it's, it's in the it's, Jewish part of the Bible. It's in that <laughs> yeah that area of the Bible, <laughs> the area of the Bible they agree on. Man, I'm trying to think. I heard somebody say that recently. Uh, it's in the Jewish part of the Bible, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, anyway. So yeah, Old Testament uh, Ten Commandments must be displayed in all public school rooms. Um. And people are up in arms about it. Yeah. And you would expect them to be. And and I get it. Um, absolutely. There is a difference between state establishing a religion. I guess you hear this phrase. So uh, this is nothing new by me. But there's a difference uh, between protection of religion and protection from religion. Yeah. And so I do think that the state has the legal right, unless it's in their constitution, that they won't have a state religion yeah. for them to do this. Yeah. And even if they had a, actually a restriction against a state-established religion, I still think that they probably have the right to do this. You could kind of split hairs on that yeah. issue. But, Over what, yeah. Um, now, some of the claims being made that, well, this is the original law, I think, like, well, Hammurabi would have an issue with that. Yeah. Mm. Um, the <laughs> you're talking about the Ten Commandments being the original law, yeah, 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 which they're not, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think that it is a setup, yeah. Uh, I think it's one of those, um, those issues that is gonna get a bunch of people on board fighting it and, um, it'll be upheld and then it's established. I, yeah. I think that the, the part of the country that is, uh, incensed about this and is going to fight it is oh. making a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think what they're going to end up doing is that they're going to end up with a court precedent that this is legal. Yeah. Because it seems to be at least constitutionally. Yeah. 
Um, and I don't know the Louisiana at state least, constitution. At least as but, far as the federal government. Now, right. you'd have to dive into Louisiana constitution to mm-hmm. affirm that, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. Uh, but I, I think that it is probably legal. I don't legal. think that they would have pushed it here if they didn't think they had the backing of the state constitution. But who knows? Yeah. I mean, I mean yeah, you're talking about <laughs> idiot politicians I mean, here, so yeah. let's not give them too much credit I mean, for you know, reading their own constitution. <laughs> yeah, I assume that it works the same as on the federal level. You know that the federal government passes laws all the time that are opposed to their U.S. constitution. Yeah, that's true. So I, I don't think the constitution means anything to anybody in any <laughs> level of government. Yeah. Um, Sometimes including judges. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but I do think that this might be a setup to... It, it can do two things, potentially. Um, I think that it can either set a court precedent that this kind of thing is legal. Yeah. And then the people that are incensed about it and want to fight about it, they're out of luck at that point. Yeah. Um, alternatively, uh, it could be an opportunity to kind of wedge in about some of the other ideological issues that are presented in classrooms all over the place and say, mm-hmm. if this isn't allowed there then your pride flag or your whatever, you know, also yeah. isn't. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. We'll, we'll see where yeah. it goes. I, I'm personally, I don't like the idea. Yeah. I, I, um, I wouldn't have so much of an issue with it. If, if it wasn't for the first few commandments. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If all, if the commandments were all things that I think are good moral guides. Yeah. yeah. Um, if it was just the, Honor thy father and thy mother, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not steal, um, thou shalt not bear false witness, uh, no. thou shalt not commit adultery, I think is actually the sixth commandment. Um, it's like really early on. That yeah. one's a little... I'm opposed to adultery, but I don't know if it's like a mortal sin. I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, wow. You know, if, if, it, if that was the commandments, then I'd probably have less of an issue with it but the first four commandments are literally all about the christian god yeah um the you'll have no other gods before me there will be no graven images uh you won't use my name in vain and you'll uh remember the sabbath yeah so almost half of the ten commandments are just about glorifying a specific god yeah and i can see where that could put some people out yeah i'm all for it like i i i I don't think we have, I'm not for having a whole bunch of religion in school, but I, I am for having some kind of basics there. <laughs> like, I don't know. We, we well, live this in, is a mandate. We, we live in such an immoral society. I like, don't, you think this is going to matter? I mean, I don't. To Well, I mean, it's it's got some people talking, if nothing else. Well, okay. But th- it is a mandate also. It is a mandate, and I have a problem with mandates in general. But mm-hmm. it's a state mandate and not a federal one, yeah. which is an important distinction for me, at least. Mm-hmm. Um, like, it's slightly better. It's it is slightly better, like <laughs> but it's but it is a distinction though. Mm-hmm. Um, so and I'm not like thrilled about this idea, like but I don't think it's the I don't think it's as bad as everybody makes it out to be. I'll say that. Well, I don't I don't think that it's terrible. I just yeah. I get it. You you're not you're not. I don't know. I mean, I just you're you're more opposed to that type of thing as far as the the commandments go. I, I'm, and I'm generally not, uh, opposed to imposing ideology on people, especially children. Yeah, that's fair. It's not the school's place to impose ideology on children. It's the parents. Yeah. No, and I, I think that this is, uh, this interrupts that in some way. Yeah. Well, I, I want to say this because it came up with some parents, some other parents I know, um, it doesn't disrupt it as much as a school uniform does. <laughs> mm. Well, I'm opposed to school uniforms, too, if so, that makes you feel well, Let me tell you, so Baldwin <laughs> County is in the process of doing away with the school uniforms. And I honestly think after looking at some of the restrictions they're going to have on the non-uniform, uh-huh. that, the, that the uniforms may have been better. 
Yeah. <laughs> like the the some of the rules they're going to have in place this year is absolutely crazy. And it really irritates me because like I was talking to with some people today about like that is just more disruption in the classroom. And it's crazy because the 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 idea is uh, behind the uniforms as well, you know, th- they create distractions in the classroom or do away with distractions in the classroom. I thought it was an equality thing. That's not what they claim. Okay. Um, like the, I, the I claim thought it was is about, always, well, you know, it, it um, I guess it uh, makes the socioeconomic differences less apparent. I mean, that's, I've heard that, like, that's not, but the, the one I've all, the big one I've always heard is that, well, you know, we just don't want people wearing stuff that's distracting to other children trying to learn and that, this kind of thing. But they make such a big deal about following the policy. Like, I remember we had a teacher in Daphne and he, we called him, he was the uniform Nazi. Like, that's who he was. That's all he cared about was enforcing uniform policy. And it's like, like, that's a distraction from the, from like what we should be doing. I, I just, I keep thinking of the Simpsons episode yeah, where they got the school uniforms and they've lost their personality to the point that the whole student body like blinks in unison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but then uh, it rains and their uniforms turn tie dye and everybody goes crazy. <laughs> well, that's a happy ending at least. <laughs> exactly. Uh, anything else about Louisiana's? No, I don't crazy think. right wing religious so it'll nut be a, ball stuff. Nah, not really. I mean, it'll be <laughs> interesting to see how, where it goes. Right. What kind of like you laid out, but like I say, at, at the end of the day, I think it's more of just a distraction than anything. The Ten Commandments thing, or the Ten Commandments. Okay, thing. we're yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I wasn't sure if you were still talking about uniforms. Oh no, the <laughs> distraction. The, yeah, that's a whole other story. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right, so let's finish up with some foreign policy. All right. Is there stuff going on foreign policy wise? There is. <laughs> There's a few things, a couple yeah. of things. Um, one, uh, and this is probably, I, I don't think this is another one of those issues where I, I, I think people are kind of missing the point in yeah. a lot of cases. So uh, the um, Ukrainian government launched five Attackums missiles at uh, Crimea yeah. over the weekends. And um, four of them were shot down. One of them got through, but seems to have been deflected. I mean, they, it was probably targeting a military base, but it didn't hit the military base. It ended up hitting the beach, um, not far from the military base and killing a bunch of civilians, Oof. um, including five kids. Yeah. And it was loaded with, um, cluster munitions. <laughs> Which most of the world has agreed as a war crime which, in and of itself. Which, by the way, I, I just want to point this out, that at the beginning of this war, that's all we flip and heard was that Russia was using cluster munitions. Like, for a long time, that was a big talking point. Which didn't seem to be true, by the way, also. Well, wh- whether it was or not, it was mm. a big talking point. And the fact of the matter is now is that Ukraine's using them, not only just using them, we gave them to Ukraine yeah. to use. We also gave them these attackums. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's, they cannot, the attackums are advanced, so far advanced that at least from the military people that I read and listen to, um, they've said that they cannot be targeted um, or, uh, really used at all without U S involvement, U S military involvement. As far as like that, they have to be programmed. They have to be, um, set up to fire. Like it may be a Ukrainian that's pressing the button at the end, but, uh, somebody from the United States is getting everything up to that point where the uh, Ukrainian can press the one button at the end. So do you think that's just because the Ukrainians just don't understand how to use the technology or is because we don't want them to understand how to use the technology? I think it's a little from column A, a little from column B. Okay. Uh, That it does include um, some secret stuff in terms of the intelligence as far as targeting uh, information is concerned. Stuff that we don't want to get out there. Yeah. Um, And it takes time to train. Yeah. I'm Um, sure that's true. We're not spending. I mean, Ukraine right now is bringing people in um, conscripting people, putting them out in the field in like less than a week. Yeah. With well, essentially no training at all. Like they definitely don't have 
the time well, and to even devote the, to. even if you train them you're talking about you're pulling these people in that are just like like who knows who they are where they came from mm-hmm. and then give them like the power to start using some of this stuff like there's no nothing would be stopping them from shooting them into russia pro- russia proper yeah well and well it, they they just did though yeah well yeah exactly i mean crimea has never not been a part of well, not since the 18th century has it yeah. not been a part of russia yeah um at least de facto, yeah. not de jure. Yeah. And uh, and just as a side note on the like pulling people in, um, they have depleted the Ukraine has depleted the number of working age men to the point that all other industries are suffering as well. Yeah. And um, as I understand it uh, from some of the stuff that I've been reading, Ukrainian men who are capable of not working. Yeah. Are not working because if they go to work somewhere, there's a high likelihood that they get conscripted. <laughs> that they're going to be conscripted. <laughs> you got folks waiting outside for people to come in so they can conscript them. Yeah. I mean, so I can like see it. Hiding like, in their basements like Biden. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he ain't going to be hiding tonight. Yeah, well, and we're talking about a bunch of stuff that they probably will not yeah, mention during I bet, these debates. I bet half of this doesn't ever <laughs> even come up. Yeah. Um. So anyway, uh, there was an attack on, uh, presumably attempted attack on a military base in Sevastopol, but cluster munitions yeah. um, are used for troop formations. Yeah. It's a Navy base. There's no troop formations there. Yeah. yeah. There's no good military target for cluster munitions, as I understand it. Again, like, yeah. this is from yeah. what you're, I'm reading. You're, and, you're going by the experts. Yeah. yeah. Um, that there's no good military target for cluster munitions at the Sevastopol military base. So while I'm going to give them the benefit of the, of the doubt in terms of that they were trying to target a military target. Yeah. It's possible they weren't. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, and, uh, the, one of the high advisors to, uh, Zelensky, um, had a Twitter post or X, whatever we're calling it these days, uh, saying that, essentially doing the same thing that Israel's saying about people in Gaza, um, which is that there aren't any innocents um, and that this is, you know, a military action and that Russia is uh, using civilians to, um, to protect (laughs) their military assets. And besides those civilians are civilian occupiers. Oh, that's such a weak argument. Like regardless of who it's coming from. So um, the idea that they were actually targeting a military target kind of makes you you wonder about that after reading that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, now here's the thing that's really uh, the biggest concern about this is that the U.S. was so highly involved in this attack that Russia is considering the U.S. absolutely a belligerent in this war now. Yeah. Um, and they've made it clear that there will be consequences to the U S military for this as well. And as I think I read, I say, I think I read because I wasn't able to confirm it. I read, but I wasn't able to confirm because I only saw it today. Um, that the, uh, that Russia has already shot down a U.S. drone over the black sea. Oh, really? Um, and that that's probably just the beginning of the response. I was going to say that just seems like another escalation, but we escalated first. Well, we always do. <laughs> because regardless of how involved the U.S. is in the targeting and so forth, um, there's no way, no way that they could use U.S. munitions on Russian soil without permission. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it just, yeah. And if we're if we're operating the equipment and the guidance stuff, like mm-hmm. that's... Like all the intelligence is ours. Yeah. Uh, there was a, a U.S. Uh, reconnaissance drone over the Black Sea at the time that it happened. No. Um, th- Russia has essentially said, like, now we're going to, and assuming that this shooting down this drone is true, um, that's Russia's announcement that uh, anything that can be used against us militarily, even if it's just for intelligence or whatever, is now fair game. Yeah. We don't care if you're firing bullets. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not good. Um, and None of course, of we good. would react in oh. the same way, if not far worse. Yeah. So, um, I think that they're well within their rights. I think this was foolish. This is a lost war. And um, I I think at this point, really, 
these kind of escalations from the U.S. side is really just uh, we can't lose before the election. Yeah, just trying to hold the stalemate till after the election. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I think this was a I huge mistake. There's another part of it that it, there is there does really seem to be a belief in D.C. that um, well. Russia hasn't responded to any of the provocations and escalations so far. Yeah. So they won't. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, there was the, that attack in the concert. Um, and there seems to be good, strong evidence that Ukraine was certainly involved in that. Yeah. At this point, um, that probably would have been crossing the line if they could have quickly found evidence that the U S was involved in planning. Yeah. There. This is one that U.S. can't deny being involved in. They can't walk away from this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I say they, we. Yeah. So th- the Russia uh, has said, okay, you've crossed the line now. And the other part of that is that there does really seem to be a belief that Putin doesn't mean what he says. Yeah. Well, and a lot of this, by the way, I just want to go back to it. We talked about it last week. A lot of this comes from the fact that we won't even engage with the man or his diplomats or anybody else. Like, we will not engage with the Russians at all. Yeah. Um, um, and so then it all just kind of becomes like a signaling game. And then if we're not even interpreting the signals right, like, where where does this all lead and end up? Yeah, the, the Joint Chiefs guy just talked to the Russian counterpart. Did he? Yeah. Yeah. Finally. Well, I mean, uh, like, for the first time since like in, in over a year, really? I'm pretty sure. I mean, see that um, to me, that's just wild as, as, as engaged as we are in this war, there's no reason for us to not have a direct line and be talking directly, at least with the, the at least the diplomat side, even if it's not, um, Biden and Putin, yeah. at least the diplomats should be on the phone constantly. Well, th- that just comes back around again to that um, our Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken. Uh, <laughs> is the worst Secretary of State in the history? <laughs> yeah, probably. I-, I think he's just about proved that now. Yeah. Um, certainly far worse than Hillary Clinton. And, yeah. and that's like a milestone, yeah, right? But like, he's definitely given Foster Dulles a run. Yeah. Uh, and I think that you could you could strongly make a case that he's worse than Foster Dulles at this point. Yeah. Um, even though Foster Dulles support, supported Adolf Hitler before World War II. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. Just to show you the, the bar that the, we're setting where, here. Where we're at here. Um, and I would say at this point that it, it seems clear to me that uh, Anthony Blinken doesn't know what his job is. Yeah. Yeah. All he does is travel around the world you know, um, issuing dick dots from the United States. Yeah. He's not a, he's not a, uh, an ambassador at Diplomat, all. Yeah. He, uh, well, there is no diplomacy there. Um, what was he before he was secretary of state? He was Biden's personal assistant or something. Oh really? Okay. I, I mean, didn't... he's, he's been like a policy guy for Biden for a long time. Has he? Okay. Mm-hmm. I just didn't know. Um, interesting. Yeah. Uh, so beyond this, Oh, so that's the other thing. I want to make it clear once again, because this is the at least the second time I've had to make this clear, that um, this can easily be interpreted as a terrorist attack supported by the United States. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So Only um, difference is it's coming from a military and not some Joe Blow on the street. Oh, I mean, we consider military certainly part of terrorism. We made oh, the IRGC yeah. uh, a terrorist organization. That's the military for Iran. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, just because you're part of an official military doesn't make you not a terrorist yeah, in no. the eyes of the U.S. Okay. So, yeah. so even by our own standard. <laughs> yeah. Um, an attack on civilians. Uh, the, there were a couple of other attacks I don't know enough about them to say, but I, I know that there's some people in the know, um, former intelligence people that are also talking about those attacks as all being coordinated with this attack thing yeah. at Sevastopol. And the other ones were attacks on, um, on direct attacks on civilian, uh, targets. Yeah. So, 
Anyway. It is baffling to me because even if you go back to the pure politics of this, this is all still bad for Biden. Mm. Like, this is not... Uh, this is a political loser, man. Um, also, uh, Putin has been making the rounds, uh, Southeast Asia. Yep. So he... Uh, they have a mutual defense agreement with North Korea now. Yep. Uh, made a bunch of economic ties. Yep. Um, you know, the analysts that I was reading, they were saying that the the support that Russia has promised to North Korea, that those famous pictures of uh, Korea um, at night where uh, South Korea is all lit up and there's one little light around Pyongyang <laughs> yeah. um, in the north. I've seen those. That in a few years, that'll be a thing of the past. Yeah. Well, um, I, I mean, it's going to be a huge economic boon for North Korea. Yeah. And uh, at the same time, though, they're also, if you'll remember, just a few years ago, Trump was going to North Korea and trying to make an agreement before it was submarined by Bolton. Yep. Um, they were well on their way to good, uh, diplomatic, um, outcomes, I think, uh, before Bolton got in the way. Yep. And so this could have been a U.S. president, not Vladimir Putin. Yeah. I mean, we, and there's plenty to gain here. Like there's, uh, yeah. I mean, as far as like economically, like opening that, that area up and, and I mean, it'll be good for the people there, and there's things that we could stand to gain from that, too. Yeah, and you'll remember, if you look back, actually, maybe you don't remember. At the time, uh, Putin and Russia were in support of nuclear disarmament in North Korea. Yeah. And were helping those negotiations along. Yeah. Not anymore. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now Uh, they're supporting North Korean nuclear development. Yeah, yeah. Not not what we want. Yeah. Not um, what not what anybody who thinks that there should be less nuclear weapons on the planet wants. <laughs> yeah. So um which was Russia up until well, a year and, ago. Yeah, until this <laughs> it's I mean like, it's it's one of those things you've just kind of poked the beast and and I know I mentioned it on the last podcast but it just feels more and more like the lines are being drawn for World War 3. Um, especially with these defense pack things. Mm-hmm. Um it just it creates one more way for things, for something bad to happen, and there just not be any choice. Yeah, like it create a domino effect. It that, creates a domino effect because once you get, because we're already in all of these um, alliances with all these other countries um, mm-hmm. all over the world, and now Russia's going around signing some of these. Like all it takes is one mishap, and it doesn't have to. We, the U.S. and Russia doesn't have to be the one to make the mishap. Yeah. Like, that's what makes it more scarier than anything. Mm-hmm. Once we're kind of in these alliances like this, you know, you're kind of, you're, you're obligated, you're at least obligated, like whether or not you follow through with it or not, it's another thing. And it's been proven over and over that support of a major power uh, makes minor powers more antagonistic. Act out. Yeah. 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 So none, um, none of this is good. Putin also um, had meetings in uh, Vietnam. Yep. Improving relations in Vietnam. Vietnam has actually been a strong economic partner of the United States since the end of the Vietnam War, practically. Yeah. yeah. They uh, were happy to see us go. But, the, yeah. <laughs> um, but we brought them back in yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Uh, well, we, and that's we started the engaging with them. Yeah. Like we should have done with North Korea and like Trump was trying to do. Yeah. Um, but now. Putin stepped in there, and a, a lot of these countries like this are looking at the way the U.S. has handled its business around the world, which is mostly with its military. Yep. Um, and the way China and Russia have handled their businesses around the world, which China has been primarily economic agreements, and Russia has been um, security agreements and general diplomacy. Yeah. And looking at well, like who would I rather side with the bully, or with these people that are nice to me? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, and so we're, we're, we're losing a lot of support to BRICS. Yeah. That's what I, I see in the future for Vietnam. Yeah. Um, is that Vietnam will become a BRICS nation, uh, instead of the, whatever, the IMF World Bank Collective West economic system nation. Yeah. And, uh, and that's a loss for us. Go look through your clothes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look through your clothes. 
yeah. and see how many of them were made in Vietnam. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just be aware that that might not be true in the future and that that will also mean that your clothes probably get more expensive. Yep, I was going to say, you're going to pay more. Yeah. Um, so. They'll just chalk that up to inflation, though, and greedy corporations. That, that's right. It's just those <laughs> greedy corporations. Exactly. Those greedy American corporations. Man, we should have kept buying from the Vietnamese. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, let's wrap up because we're already run over an hour. Um, All right. And I, I, we just can't help ourselves. <laughs> yeah, a lot to talk about. Uh, uh, but next week we should have some more Supreme Court stuff. Yeah, I, I think that we're going to probably end up focusing on the Supreme Court next week because just all these decisions coming out. I need time to catch up and read. Well, that's you sent me stuff today. I was like, dude, I have no time. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> like, I'm sorry, but like, I just, I, it's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll try to get, I mean, I'll have a whole week now to kind of dig into some of that and, and kind of look into it. Because there's, there's definitely some cases I wanted to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, we'll, the Trump and Biden debate is tonight. So we're, we're putting this out oh, yeah. hours before that debate. Who knows if anything interesting will come out of it? Well, that's kind of what... It should be entertaining, though. I thought about that actually when we were talking about whether to record tonight. Or when I asked you whether we could record It was in my mind, too. But Um, I felt like we'd be... I thought, well, you know, we could wait till tomorrow and cover the debate. And then I thought, there's probably nothing worth covering. Well... I mean, I'm going to listen to it. Oh, I'm going to watch it. I want to watch it. But at the same time, there may be a bunch of stuff out of it or maybe nothing. I didn't feel like it was worth pushing the podcast another day. Yeah. Is is where I landed because that was in my equation too. Yeah, I, I think that there will probably be no reason to address anything that happened in the debate next week. That's we, my guess. My my guess is that we're gonna have a lot of funny stuff to talk about from well, the debate. Maybe. But I don't think that as far as like hard policy stuff, we're going to get much. But who knows? I mean, Trump may come out as a libertarian and like start talking like <laughs> Rothbard. I mean, who knows? Yeah, I would. I would. I, I would settle for Rand Paul. <laughs> Rand Paul. Uh, <laughs> I, I take that too. <laughs> Um, so we will see. Yeah. Count I'm not holding my it. breath for any of that. Don't count on it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we'll be back next week. Um, in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean. Uh, like and share, comment, subscribe, um, leave a review. You can always send me a message at michael at the liberty mic.com. Um, I mostly respond. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, that's all the stuff, right? I think so. Okay. Um, well, then we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Later.